1 Kings chapter 18, just for time's sake, let your eye run down to verse 17. Might have a quite a lengthy reading here. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and all that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel to Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which ate at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all Israel, unto all children of Israel, pardon me, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the, Lord, the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it, for you are many. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God, either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner of, with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass then, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of, of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would continue two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it up on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And he did it the third time. And the water ran about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. 
And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said unto his servant, Go up and look toward the sea. And he went and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, he said, Go there, behold there, ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, and like a man's hand. And he said, Go up. Say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meantime while the heaven was black with clouds and wind, there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezebel and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he girded his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Let's pray. Father, take your word and inscribe it on our hearts and let us know of the power of the Lord in this house tonight. Father, thank you for your people you've brought. And I'm conscious, Lord, that you're here. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you have all things in your charge. And Lord, we thank you that you're for us, that you are not against us, that you love us. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would come and speak to us Speak to every heart we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. There are 450 prophets of Baal and one prophet of Yahweh. The odds aren't very good for Elijah. 450 prophets of Baal of wickedness and there's only Elijah and God. So, this evening, what I want you to see, brother, sister, and what I want to tell you this evening through God's word to encourage you, one plus God is a majority. One plus God is a majority. First Kings 18 and 24, we read of Elijah. It says, he called on, call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire. Let him be God. And all the people answereth and said, it is well spoken. In other words, if we really know our God, they that know their Lord, we should be strong to do exploits. In other words, the Christian church has come to such a state where we feel we're defeated, whether it's in society, or in our nation, maybe it's at home, or wherever you may be, in your workplace, and we get a defeatist mentality and attitude and things. But really, you and I are victorious in Christ. You and I are overcomers through Christ. And sometimes we sit and we tell the people, as a preacher, I'm always telling you, and I'm trying to build you up, and I'm trying to encourage you on in God, and I'm, I'm trying to let you see who you are in Christ, but uh, nevertheless, it comes to the place, the part, the point in time, uh, where you need to take it into yourselves, that you will live this life. Again, this week has shown me how many, not just people that I would minister to here, but how many people are really living below their privileges as children of God in the Spirit. How many people really don't believe? In fact, what I just ministered to before we came here today, sat before me and says, yes, I am saved. But do I really believe it? I don't know how you can be saved and not believe it. You may have a, a, a doubt sometimes or a lack of faith sometimes, but do we really believe what the Bible says we are and who we are in Christ? Do you really believe who God is? Do you really believe that God can do what he says he will, can do and will do what he says he will do? Do we really take it on, and board, on board in our hearts and say, Lord, you have said it. That settles it. Now I'll believe it. Do we really take it in and say with joy in our hearts that we're glad that God speaks to us and we take it home? And whether we're in our workplace or wherever we are, we then, when times come that we need it, we realize that he is for us and not against us. That God loves you. And that's what I want to look at tonight. 450 prophets of Baal and Elijah was the only prophet of Yahweh there at that time. Later on, Elijah takes a crisis of faith. 
We read in chapter 19, we may look at it, we may not, that Elijah hears that Ahab, whom he spared, Ahab was the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And Ahab, whom he spared his life, goes to his wife Jezebel. And he's not a man at all. He goes crying to his wife. And his wife says, well, I'm going to get the hold of this prophet and I'm going to slay him. And so by the time it gets to Elijah's ears, Elijah has forgotten the fire that's fell from heaven. Elijah has forgotten the power that came upon that altar and not only licked up the stones, but licked up the damp, the damp wood and licked up the very water and the dust itself. And he more or less turned it into a, a crystallized car park. Here he's saying, look, I, I can do all these things. I can turn that sand to glass if you want me to. If that's what it takes to be able to encourage you, if that's what it takes to get people to look my way, if that's what it takes a sign wonder ministry in our nation, he says, if that's what it takes in Israel, he says, I'm the God to do it. Brothers and sisters, if the church isn't like Elijah, where we get to the place where we believe he's God who not only can do it, but will do it, then we are losing big time. We are not being true to the word and true to our faith and true to Christ who has told us that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so whenever we allow ourselves to get uh, so defeated uh, that we throw the hands up and walk away from Christ or we so defeated we throw the hands up and walk away uh, from God, we, we just become cold and indifferent and backslidden. And the amount of people I'm coming across recently in the church with their suit on or with their Sunday clothes on, I should say, and their faces are different than their heart. Their faces are different than their heart. Their face says, I'm here for this is what we do. Their face says, I'm here and I've dressed well. And their face says, I've clocked in my card because Sunday's the day I go to church. But God isn't looking at the face. God's looking at your heart. And smiles can go a long way in humanity. And it's good to smile, but God looks upon the heart. Elijah was one man. One plus God is a majority. Elijah became the majority vote in Israel. What if the church, although it seems as though it's winning, the church is, a, is, is not going to win. You know why? Because Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And a few and I say, well, you know, there's less going to church and that's all we hear. Listen, because you may hear there's less going to a certain church, it doesn't mean to say God isn't going to raise up many others. And God sifts churches. God sifts the hearts of men and women. God sifts assemblies and churches and he sifts them like a corn is sifted in a sieve that, that he will bring the goodness and those who are in heart with him, in tune with him. And that is the grain and the kernels he brings into his storehouse. Notice what it is here, what Elijah says. He says, call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God that answereth by fire. Let him be God. In other words, the God who's able to answer prayer, let him be God. The God who does answer prayer and will answer prayer, let him be God. The God who will speak to you, the God who's with you, let him be God. You see, we listen too many times to too many other voices and the other voices are lying spirits. And so it tears us down. And God says, no, you call on me and I will answer. I'm the one with the power, the control, the authority. And I'm the one who's still upon the throne. Listen, and again, I, I dealt with, with someone just this afternoon. Someone this afternoon with the exact same problem. And they're coming and they're saying, uh, not only one, I don't know if I believe this or not, and now this has hit me like a, a ton of bricks is what they're saying. And my heart has been pricked here. My heart has been changed and turned. I need to get right with God. I've been living a lie. We need to really say, see this book. Do we really believe it? What God says, do we trust it? Because if we can't trust God for the other things, we certainly can't trust him in his word for salvation. And then we say, well, then where are we with God? And what does it say about who we are in God? And we must believe him for more things and greater things. Call upon your gods, he says. He says, but I'll call upon mine. 
Someone says to me today, so I'm just, I've been ministering all week and I'm full and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak. And someone else says to me today, there was actually a queue at the end of the tent meeting. And that's what kept me. And someone came to me today, just this afternoon there, was one of the last ones I was speaking to. And they were, they were disturbed too. And they were coming and they were saying, you know, I'm coming and I'm seeing something that I haven't seen before. What is it? I'm going to my church. I'm, I'm faithful to my meetings. But I'm seeing something that I haven't seen before. How do I get it? How do I get it? Brothers and sisters, how do we get it? I tell you how you get it. You seek the Lord while he may be found. You call ye upon him while he is near. This is how you get it. You get it in a place of prayer. You get it in the place of speaking to God. In the place where you're adoring Jesus. You see, many people think that we're a winning team. That we're on a losing side. That we're a defeated church. And brothers and sisters, if you listen to that voice, you're listening to a lying spirit. We are on the winning team. We are on the victorious side. We have read the back of the book and Jesus is coming again for a spotless bride. You see, you're not on your own in this life when many of us many times think that we are. You're not left helpless for the Holy Ghost. He lives in you. And if he lives in you, then that means the power of heaven lives in you. And since he lives in you, then you must realize then you're sealed for time and eternity because he doesn't live in you and move house the next day. Even when the temple gets run down, he still remains the same. 450 against one. That's what it looks like to the vision of man and woman. What is it you're up against? How many of your foes are there? Well, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter if it was a million prophets of Baal. It wouldn't have mattered. One million voices outside of Christ, one million satanic voices will never defeat the Lord Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world fall into satanic worship. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world become debauched and depraved and, and so sinful because it doesn't matter if you and I keep ourselves right with God and if you and I keep ourselves in the love of God, you and I will see that there's more be with us than be with them. God is for us and he's not against us. One plus God is a majority. Romans 8 and 31 Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? The term there, if, isn't if, because if may be, maybe if yes, if no, if not. The term if there in the reading of the original means since. He's writing it, but if someone's reading it and they don't know Christ, then they, they, they can't say God is for them. But if you're saved and blood washed and blood bought, you can say, since God be for me. There's no ifs about it. Someone again says to me today, I want to be able to do things, but I don't know how to do it. I says, you need to step out in faith. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters. If you don't step out of the boat, you're never going to walk on water. If we don't step out of the boat, you never walk on the water. This woman was telling me, says, look, I don't know what to do. I, I, I get so far and I can't do it. I freeze and it just can't. My heart won't let me. I says, no, your heart wants to. Your mind won't let you. And so it's a renewing of your mind. A repentance of the mind will work the heart according to the word of God. And you see, it's like whether you're preaching here or a tent or you're singing or you're working with children, you have to step out. You have to step out and say, Lord, I'm doing this because I feel it's in my heart, the calling of God. And you step out into it. Listen, the same of spiritual giftings. 
The same with spiritual giftings and word of knowledge and, and interpretation of tongues and so on. You have to step out or you're never going to get it. Even whenever you have, uh, you, you've been baptized in the Spirit, and that's the key to open all the, other, all the other giftings. And when you have that key, you must step out in faith. You feel the Lord coming upon it, upon you, and you must step out in faith. Every time I give an interpretation or a word of prophecy, I have to step out in faith. I don't know what God's going to say in him, through me. Stepping out in faith, because you know he's moving on your heart. Since God be for us, who can be against us? Philippians 4 and verse 13 says this, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now listen, he didn't say I can't or I can do some things. He didn't say a few things, a couple of things, or many things. Now when he says all things, he doesn't want you to go and jump out of an airplane without a parachute. What he means is I can do all things for Christ and the kingdom of God. Spiritually, I can do this through Christ. So it's learning to know that he's with you. It's learning to have the relationship, the communion, and the fellowship with Christ that will lead you into these areas and things. You know, friends, we can, brothers and sisters, we, can, we could be here and we could sing on a Sunday and we could go home again and that be it the rest of the week, and we know Jesus in the sense, some sort of sense, or we love him in some sort of sense, and he's not in our thoughts any other sort of sense. And that's not fellowship. That's not communion with Christ. Communion with Christ is your character with his character on your own. Communion with Christ is your character with his character. In other words, meeting together on your own. And so we need to realize that we can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Listen, 1 John 4 and 4, you all know it. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? The old devil's in the world. And Christians are afraid of him. The old satanic forces are in the world. Christians are afraid of them. The old minions of hell are in the world, in the invisible world, and Christians are afraid of them. Listen, brothers and sisters, greater, not the same, not lesser, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And these minions may work on others and their flesh and their mind to come against you, but if you're standing in truth, Right with God. There's nothing will stand against you. He will fix that. He will sort that out. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 says this. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Now if someone took a gun and came in and started shooting, it doesn't mean to say a bullet won't hit you. Let me tell you what it is. The satanic avenues who behind the scenes would love to see you fall. Bitterness of hearts that would love to destroy our assembly and other assemblies. Whispering spirits that lie to the ears of others to bring them down. These voices who are there, they are creating weapons against you whether it's here, at work, at home, wherever it may be, whatever you're doing, and they create these weapons. And it's them when they are fashioned against you because there are many Christians being beheaded for the name of Jesus Christ. But these weapons, he says, no, 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 no. He says, you trust me and you keep going on in me. He says, and I'll deal with your enemy. The enemy is defeated. And one plus God is a majority. Listen to Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. He says, But truly I am full of power by the faith of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to, to Israel his sins. Notice what the prophet said, But truly I am full of power. Now, you would think that people today would say to you, Oh, you see, you're being haughty. You're, you're, you're being arrogant. 
Micah, you're being haughty and arrogant then. I am truly. In other words, there's no doubts. He says, I'm full of power. Now, this is old covenant. And if we are in the new covenant and the Spirit of God lives in you, the same Spirit which raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Ghost, then surely you and I in the new covenant, we can say to all those things that come against us and in our families and against our families, we need to be able to say, one plus God is a majority. Truly, I am full of power. That's what we should be claiming and saying, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might. Notice, and it's for witnessing, to declare unto Jacob his transgressions, to Israel his sin. It's called boldness in the Holy Ghost. Surely we're full of that power that brings boldness. Listen to Ephesians 3 and verse 16. Paul says that he that is the Father would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. In other words, Paul is saying, how rich is God in glory? How powerful is our God in heaven? We can't even begin to fathom that. He says, yet he lives in you and he's the one who strengthened you. He's the one who builds you up and lifts you up, who is for you and not against you. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The fear that I've been dealing with this week is tremendous. Not me, but others. Coming in the, the prayer line at the tent, the healing, they just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. Fear, 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 fear. And I said, what are you afraid of? You're the church. I'm afraid to witness. You're the church. Psalm 68 and verse 35 says, The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Now, as far as I am concerned, he's still the God of Israel. He's still our God. He's still giving strength and power to his people. Joshua 1 and 9, he says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And notice he said this, I'm commanding you to be strong. I'm commanding you to have a good courage. Why? How can I be, Lord? I'm commanding you not to be dismayed or afraid. But how can I be? Because the Lord thy God Yahweh, thy Elohim, God, the Redeemer, the redeeming God who created Elohim, the heavens and the earth, is with you, whithersoever you go. So that's when you're going to a doctor's appointment. That's when you're going to the hospital. That's when you're going for a job interview. That's when you're going to bring a, a word of testimony. That's when you're going to sing. That's when you're coming up to play. That's when you're taking the children, kingdom kids in the Sunday schools and so on. That's what it is. It's the Lord is with you. You say, but I can't do this. I'm not used to doing these things. No, you may not be used, but he's still the same. He's still the same God and he's with you. The Lord Jesus told us in Matthew 28 and 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or the end of this age. Now, he's God who cannot lie. Listen, when there's a tax come, we, we go into the Old Testament. We're not going to it. You can read uh, Numbers 23 when you go home. But Balaam went to Balak, who had hired Balaam to curse Israel passing through the land. And whenever uh, Balaam went to curse Israel, he found that he couldn't do it. He found he couldn't. He was powerless. This old enchanter. This old heathen enchanter, Numbers 23 and verse 21. Listen to what Balaam reports to Balak the king because he couldn't curse Israel. He says, the Lord his God is with him. Huh? Look, 2012, the tent mission up, in the, up behind us here in the school and, and the football and the wee pitches, the football pitches we had. On the Sunday evening, this wee church, 850 seats were put out, and they were all filled. And I thought Sunday night everybody would be at church and be nobody there. They were all filled. After that, we're going to have a healing service. And listen, there wasn't too many went home and more came. 
And the thing about it was, what I didn't know was there was a young woman, she was a witch sitting there, trying to cast spells on me. And I could see her burning holes in me. And she was spitting nearly at me. And one Tuesday night, I knew nothing about it, I seen this young girl was sitting watching me two rows back. And people were being healed and coming under the power of the Spirit. And there was a woman who was from the Baptist church and she had a heart uh, defect. And we prayed for her and her heart was healed. And a woman two rows back who had the same defect, she was healed as well. The child who comes here, his wee leg was turned in and we prayed and his leg turned out and he didn't need his operation. Going to break his leg and reset it. And I'll tell you something. I was afraid. Because <laughs> I thought, Lord, how are we ever going to do this? But the Lord spoke to me and says, go do it and I will fill it. And he'd done that for three solid days. Brothers and sisters, Balaam could not curse Israel. And his words were this, the Lord his God is with him. That young woman came in here one Tuesday night with her dad. She was over from England. And she came over. She was just spirit hanging out of her. That's the only way I can put it. Blackened in her eyes. And they told me, I didn't know until they told me what had happened sitting down here at the back. And I prayed and I cast it out. She went home with a Bible under her arm, praising Jesus. She says, I was trying to cast spells on you. She says, I was trying to curse you and curse you. And I kept bouncing back at me. She says, I was feeling sick every time I'd done it. And I knew nothing about it. Do you know why? For the Lord his God was with him. Notice this. For the Lord his God is with them. Notice there. And the shout of a king is among them. Do you know every time the devil goes to attack you, that our king steps in front and there's a shout of a king among us? Do you know when we praise, there's been a shout of a king in the camp tonight? Do you realize you and I should be the most victorious and happy, blessed people tonight because God came into this place and he spoke to us. Because God has come into this place and we have worshipped him and he's met with us. And, they could, and anyone could say, oh, the minions and the devils of hell could just look at us and say, oh, we can't curse them in Zendana, Cloney, Elam. And why? Because their God is with them. There's a shout of a king in the camp and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, Psalm 18 and 29, David says to the, Lord, to the Lord, For by thee have I run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. That touch of the Spirit upon him. All these enemies coming around him and David just ran right through them. He leaped right over a big wall. Oh, God always makes a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Listen to what he says. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth them upon high places. He teacheth my hands to war. Listen, brothers and sisters, you, one plus God, you're in the majority. See, when you're going around your daily duties tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and so on, and you start feeling lower down and you're hearing these things and the whole atheist agenda and the whole left-wing agenda and all these rottenness and rubbish and sin and all this stuff that's going on, and you feel like we're getting less and less and less and lower and lower. No, no. Jesus may be sifting his church to bring out the pure wheat, but I'll tell you one thing. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You'll be able to say, oh, I'm going to work and I'm the only Christian. Lord, take it easy on them because one, me and you are a majority. One plus God is in the majority. Yes. We even read in 2 Kings chapter 6 of Elisha, Elijah's apprentice as a time. And Elijah, his mantle now falls on Elisha, a double portion. And now Elisha has his apprentice with him and his servant and the king of Syria has his armies encamped around about them. And the young man sees this host before him of this enemy. And he says, what are we going to do here? We're, we're, going, to get, we're going to get killed here, Second Kings 6 and 15. Alas, master, what shall we do? And he answered, fear not. 
Now that's leadership. Come on, men and women of faith. It's time we've seen into the spiritual. It's time you've seen by faith what is possible. It's time that you believe the God of the Bible. And it's time that you say, whenever others are saying, what are we going to do? Say, fear not. Oh, one plus God's a majority. And God is with us. Who can can be against us? There's no weapon formed against us that's going to prosper. Bring up the weak in the faith. Bring them up and encourage them and strengthen them. Touch the sick and pray for them in the name of Jesus. What's well, time, brothers and sisters? We're weak. Listen to what he says. What shall we do? And he answered, fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. I can imagine this wee servant stand beside Elisha and he's in fear with all the enemy around him. See, their swords and their spears, their shields, their chariots, their horses snorting. And he's looking at them all and he can see them all getting closer. He says, we're done for. Elisha, we're done for. Elisha says, oh, there's more for us than there is for them. And he goes, he's lost the plot. It's only me and you. He says, Lord. <laughs> Elisha prays. He says, Lord, open his eyes. And verse 17 says, And the Lord, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. There's a spiritual word, brothers and sisters. Now you be aware of this. This isn't just about coming to church. This isn't just about singing a song. This isn't just about uh, this mamby pamby relationship with Jesus where we have one foot in, in carnality and one foot in religiosity and things seem to be go great. No, no. This is a life to be lived. There's power to be taken. There's power to be given. There's things to be had and there's more for the kingdom of God. We have to realize that at this present moment in time, this place is swarming with angelic beings. This place at this moment in time. Listen, it wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time. And also I'll tell you, and I used to sit and I used to see a cloud come down. And I just sat in the heads of the people and I said to Elson, now this will happen, watch. Boom. I saw the, the presence of the Lord in the cloud coming and resting on the church as they were worshiping and as they were praising. And I've seen that many times when I was in Whitewell in my church growing up through it. And I thought at one time when I first started wearing glasses, it was my glasses I was doing that. I started to learn what it was. And I'm going to tell you something that wouldn't be the first time I've been in here. And I've seen them just hover over you and I've tried to encourage us now enter in, press in. But you know what? People think when you say these things, he's nuts. You're like Alicia. There'd be more that be for us than be against us or that be with them. And the thing is, so you don't always say these things because people think you're nuts. But I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, I have seen it and I have tried to encourage you when I've come down and I've went, no, press in, press in, press in. Come on, press in. And some people don't even try. And the Lord says, here I am. I'm with you. I'm for you. My face is towards you. The presence is the pawn name of God. The pawn name means that bit which turns. In other words, when you turn your face to look left or right, God hears his people praising with a true heart and he turns his face. In other words, he manifests his presence. And I've seen it. We were in the back room, some of us one time in the back room. Two of us seen it, we didn't say until it was the next day, I think it was, or later on, and we spoke about it to different people, and they says, well, that's what they saw. Brothers and sisters, these things happen. These things are real. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, when you're praying, Pray fervently. Get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm here. See, this morning in the prayer meeting upstairs, it was mighty. We were all on our knees. I realized I was on my knees with a chair above my head like this. I was praying with a chair like this, lifting it up and down. I need to start pressing in, believing God. 
We need our nation touched. Elijah took 12 stones for the 12 tribes. He took, he took the animals and the wood and the sacrifice. And he says, listen, the, wood, the fire has to be lit on the wood and burn up the way. He says, it has to come from heaven. Listen, we don't want strange fire of man's ability that burns up the way. We don't want strange fire of things that aren't real and aren't true. But I can tell you one thing, when we get to know our God, heaven comes down and fire comes. And when that fire comes, things happen. And he burnt up the stones. What stone? Turned stone to glass. But here's the thing, there was a sacrifice there. No sacrifice, no fire. No sacrifice, no fire. The lovely Lord Jesus, I'm going to close in a minute. The lovely Lord Jesus says, when he was arrested, Matthew 26 and 53, thinkest thou not that I cannot pray to my Father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Two angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah and, and turned them into two lakes of crystal. Two big cities. Jesus says, you men are holding me. You're beating me. You're trying me. But you know I'm with my father. My father's with me and I'm in the majority. Do you not think I could ask now my father would send me 12 legions of angels, 72,000 angels. But he didn't do it because he knew he had to die for me. Why? That I would know him, that you would know him and have our God. And having our God, we could say, Lord, thank you. When we're one with you, we're in the majority. He took all that you think that you haven't got, that you may have all that he has. Elijah, like Isaiah, Micah, King David, Elisha, Joshua, Paul, John, Peter, the Lord Jesus, all the apostles, even the ungodly cursor Balaam who could not curse Israel. They knew there was more to this life, to this world that meets the eye a spiritual world and a world of spirits, an unseen and visible world to the natural carnal 2020 vision and human eye. Elijah's name means Yah is my God. And he, re he realized that when he was with Yah and Yah was with him, that one plus God was a majority. I want to read just a few titles out. Whatever you're facing, this is your God. This is our Jesus. And this is who he is and what he is. And the stakes for to make you a majority in whatever you're facing. The Lord Jesus Christ is not just a, a mere mortal man. He's the son of God and he's the son of man. He's the word incarnate. He had a Bible, as it were said one time, in his head and another in his heart. He fulfilled that word for us, and to him give all the prophets witness. He is El Elyon, God Most High. He is a creator and possessor of heaven and earth. He is El Shaddai, God all-powerful and all-sufficient. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides. He is Jehovah Rophe, the Lord who heals. He is Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord, or Makha, the Lord who smites. Jehovah Nisse, the Lord, our banner. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. He is Jehovah Sekenu, the Lord, our righteousness. He is Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is there. He is uh, Jehovah Rufa. The Lord, my shepherd. Yes, the Lord Jesus is all the prophets said he is and more. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Colossians 2 and 9 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness 
of the Godhead bodily. Even as the old Puritan Samuel Rutherford said, they lose nothing who gain Christ. Here are some of the titles and the symbols of Christ throughout Scripture. The shape and the foreshadowings of Christ. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He's the first and he's the last. He's the second Adam. He's the anointed one with the Holy Ghost and power. He's our ark of refuge. He is the author of eternal salvation, the author and the finisher or the perfecter of our faith. He is the altogether lovely one. He's our all and all and he is our everything, our anchor, our advocate, the almighty, the ancient of days. He's the angel of the Lord. He's the apostle and high priest of our profession. He's the arm of the Lord made bare for us. He's our blessed and only potentate. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords who only hath immortality dwelling in light which no man can approach unto. He's the bright and morning star, the brightness of the Father's glory. He's our brother. He's our bridegroom. He's our beloved. He's the brazen serpent in Yahweh's branch. He's the bread of life. He is a great creator, yet he is a child in the manger. He is a carpenter's son, yet he is the Christ of God. He is called the commander. He's the called of God and the commander of his people. He's the captain of our salvation and the Lord of hosts. He is the chiefest among any 10,000 of our souls. He is a covert from the tempest and the city of refuge. He's our confidence, the chosen of God and the called. He's the consecrated one and he is the covenant of the people, the cornerstone and he is our crown of glory, a diadem of beauty. He's our counselor and our comforter, our consolation. He's a consolation of Israel and he's ours. He is a father, our father's dear son and the only begotten son. He is a father's love and the love of the father. He is the father's delight and the Jew unto all, the, that is the D-E-W unto all Israel. He makes us his people like a well-watered garden. He is the desire of all nations, the day star, the day spring and the day's man. He's the door of the sheep, our dwelling place and our defense. He is David's greater son, and yet he is despised and rejected of men. He is a man of sorrow and acquainted of grief, and we hid him up where our faces from him. We despised him and esteemed him not, yet he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Yes, we all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of, of us all. He is our deliverer. He is the ensign to the nations. He is equal with God for he is God. He is the express image of God's person, the everlasting Father, the eternal life, the end of all ceremonial law, and our exceeding great reward. He is our friend, for he is the friend of sinners. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's the first begotten of the dead, and yet he's the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead. He lives to die no more. He is the faithful witness and the forerunner. He is fairer than the children of men, being anointed with oil above his fellows. He's a fruit of the earth, yet our faithful creator. He's a foundation and our fortress. He's our fountain of living waters. He's also a fountain open for sin and for uncleanness. He is our God, our guest, our governor among the nations. He is the governor of Israel, our guide and our glory. He is Jesus, the highest, the head of all principalities and powers, the head of his body, the church, the holy one, the husband and the heir of all things. He's our great high priest, our habitation, our hiding place, our help, our hope, and our house of defense, our horn of salvation, and the head of the corner. He is the image of the invisible God, invisible, immortal, incorruptible, impeccable, Emmanuel, the great I am that I am, the interpreter and the intercessor of all the saints unto the Father. He is the just one, the judge of the quick and the dead, he is our keeper, he is our king, and he is the king of saints, the king of glory, our leader, our life, our love, the light of the world. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb that was slain. He's the lamb of God, the lamb in the midst of the throne, yet he is the Lord God omnipotent, the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the lowly savior, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of glory, the Lord of all, the Lord of the dead, and the Lord of the living. He's the Lord of the whole earth, and he's the Lord of the 
the harvest. He's Messiah. He's man, the man of God's right hand. He is the man of sorrows, the man of Galilee, the man of Calvary, the man among men, the man that is my fellow, says Yahweh. Mighty God, the one to save. He's mighty and most high. He's most mighty. He's upright. He's high. He's lofty and he's holy. He is the messenger of the covenant. He is the minister of the circumcision. He's master, master teacher, ruler, man of war. He's mediator, mercy seat, minister of the sanctuary. He's our mercy, full and faithful high priest. He's our mirror and our campfire, and he's a manna sent down from God. He is the Nazarene and the Nazarite. He is the offspring of David, yet the only wise God, our Savior, omnipotent, yet our offering for sin, peace offering, our propitiation, and he is our Passover. He is the power of God on the salvation. He is the Prince of Peace, and he is the preserver of men, the plant of renown, our portion, and he is precious. He's prophet, he's preacher, He's physician and he's the prince of life. He's resurrection. He's the root of Jesse and the root of David. He's a ruler in Israel and rich on the wall that call upon him. He's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley fair. He is our redeemer and our ransom. He's our righteousness, our refiner, and he is our purifier, the rock of ages. He's our refuge from the storm. He's our rivers of water, a rock of offense, and a root out of a dry ground. He is the star of Jacob and the son of righteousness. He's the shepherd and bishop of our souls. He's the sower. He's the stone of stumbling. He's a stronghold. He's a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. He's a shadow from the heat. He's our shield and our buckler, our sword, our scepter. He's our great Solomon and he is our sanctuary, our savior. He's the scapegoat. He's our sacrifice, our surety, and he is our sanctification. He's the son of God. He's the son of the highest. He's called the son of the blessed. He's the son of man and he's the son of David. He's the seed of the woman and he is the greatest servant of all. He's our teacher. He's the truth. He's our treasure, he's a testator, he's the true God, he's the eternal life, he's the tabernacle of God with men. He is the temple of the eternal spirit. He is a tender plant. He's a tree of life and he's a true vine. He's God's unspeakable gift. He's the wisdom of God. He's the way to the Father. He's the wall of fire. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is the well-beloved one and the water of life. Yes, brothers and sisters, to him, to Jesus, give all the prophets witness. He is the one that says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Oh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, one with God is in the majority. Oh, praise the name of Jesus tonight. Oh, what are we fearing? Why are we worried? He's so much more. I'm just out of puff. <laughs> I'm out of puff. He's so much more. He's more than our minds can take, than our hearts can believe. He's more than our eyes can see. Oh, he is God. He is God Almighty. Jesus, we worship you. He is that baptizing spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, let him be your strength tonight. Let him be your comfort. Let him be your hope. Let him be your joy. Let him be everything you need for whatever you need, whenever you need it. I am that I am. I am what you need, when you need it, how you need it, wherever you need it. I am, I do not change. He says, I, the Lord, change not. He says, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. It doesn't matter who you are. He says, I don't change. Well, with him, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. This is our God. This is the one who answers by fire. This is the one who comes down in power and glory. And this is the one who we worship tonight. The name of Jesus, Jesus only. May God bless his word to all of us tonight. I trust you've been encouraged by his word tonight. I trust you've been built up and blessed by him because he is altogether lovely. Father, we love you and we worship you. Lord Jesus, you're everything to us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even when we are weak, you're strong, you're always strong. And we thank you, Lord, it's not in our feelings, but our faith. And it's not what we see, it's who you are. And Lord, we ask you now, Lord, that you'd open blinded eyes, Lord, that the devil has blinded. 
And oh God, that you would thwart the wiles of the devil and the enemy, oh God, against your people, that circumstances would be changed. That men and women, Lord, would turn again to the Lord. That, oh God, salvation would come to our nation. And that men and women would turn to the God and our fathers. Oh God, we pray that you'd send the fire. We pray, Lord, you'd come down in power. Oh God, that you'd raise up Elijah's and Elisha's, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you let us see there to be more with us than be with them. And we pray, Lord Jesus, you'd give your church victory. Oh, give us a heart of courage, O oh God. Lord, that we would follow you, that we would serve you, that we would follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. And, O oh Lord, that we would know you in such a way, O oh God, that it would be doubtless that men and women would say, we cannot curse them. For God is with him, for God is with her, for God is with them. Oh God, we pray, Lord, that you would do a mighty work. May there be the shout of a king in the camp tonight. Oh, a shout of a king in our situations, Lord. And oh Lord, that the name of Jesus, let the voice of the Lion of Judah roar. Oh God, among your people, Lord, that we would be victorious for your name and for your glory. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory for you alone deserve it. Lord, we we'll love you and we we'll worship you. Oh, Father, as we're singing praise, we ask you, Lord, Lord, that you would bless us. And oh, God, we ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen.